Hi, Aquarius. Welcome to your January 2018 astro update. It's Raina here. Now, I just finished doing your opposite sign, Leo. And Leo has a blue moon, total lunar eclipse on the 31st of the month. And Leo's your opposite sign. So you're tied into this situation that is quite spectacular if you think about it. And you have also recently had your own lunar eclipse back in August, August 7th to be exact. And you're going to have in February a solar eclipse in your sign. So Leo and Aquarius going through major changes and this can be kind of unsettling for this polarity because you're both fixed signs and change isn't something you necessarily embrace. When I hear the word change, I get excited. I feel energized, but it can be kind of like unnerving from the perspective of, okay, what is going to happen? Even if it's something positive, it can be a little bit um, stressful or stress inducing. So I want you to look at it in a positive way. I want you to see it in the way that it kind of shakes you up out of your comfort zone and maybe into something better. Because I think all of us as human beings have at least one experience in our life where there was some sort of upheaval or just um, something around us that forced us to change. And when we looked back on it, we realized it was for the best. So we begin the, the month with a full moon. This is why that lunar eclipse at the, eclipse at the end of the month is a blue moon because you typically only have one full moon in a month. And the full moon is either on the first or the second, depending on where you live, 11 degrees of cancer. This is your sixth house of health, your daily routines, your daily schedule, your workplace, just the work itself that you're doing. A full moon, this could bring something to a head at work. This could be like do or die where you are just like, in certain cases, I'm done. So it's not necessarily that you lose your job, but you just say, I've had enough. You know, something comes to your attention that makes you just like decide to chuck it. Um, it can also be that you're retiring. It can be that um, you find out something about a coworker or that you may have a promotion even. I mean, a full moon can be that something is bigger than it was before. This is a super moon. So it has much more, it has a, a greater effect on us earthlings. So see how that goes for you. It can bring out health matters. There can be like a purification that occurs, something, you know, purged. The very next day we have Uranus going direct in Aries at 24 Aries in your third house of communications. So Uranus actually deals with electronics and I would say the internet, uh, the, the third house is the internet. So perhaps you have been playing around some of you um, Aquarians, because that's your ruler. So in the third house, you're, you're comfortable because it's a fellow air sign, Gemini, who rules this in the universal chart. And perhaps, um, if you were trying to get something off the ground in terms of, uh, anything electronic, internet based, maybe now will be a better time. Uranus is not this predictable energy, but unpredictability can be an asset when you're talking about online endeavors, because I'm sure all of you have heard the term viral and things go viral when 
there's like networking involved. People send things to, to other people, whether it's a, a video or a blog post. And all of a sudden, it's like, just this, it's, it's like wildfire. So that can happen for certain people, uh, with Uranus transiting your third house where something just, um, catches hold of the, 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 uh, general consensus or, you know, how people are communicating. And that could be to your benefit if you're doing something that involves selling things online or what have you. There's also going to be another connection here because Mercury rules this house. On the 11th, Mercury goes into Capricorn. So until the 11th, you have Mercury in the 11th house, which is the house that you rule in the universal chart. And what's interesting about that is that I've also heard of the 11th house being attributed to the internet. I was kind of surprised when the third house became connected to uh, to the the internet, and that's because communication has um, morphed over the years into an electronic based format. Whereas before we had snail mail, we had you know people used to write letters, people used to actually. Um, communicate through television. Now we have different formats than, than we used to before. And so that's reflected in the third house. The 11th house is mass consciousness. So there is that connection on that level and also Uranian energy. So I would also say with Mercury in that house that this is also a sign from the universe that your internet endeavors may be really focused upon at this time where you really want to get the message out about something to a great number of people. And then on the 11th, Mercury goes into that 12th house. You do have a lot of energy in the 12th house. I want to just touch upon briefly Saturn and Pluto in that 12th because that is... That can be challenging for some people. You've had Pluto there now for 10 years. Pluto's going to be there for another five. A lot of Aquarians, I don't know how many of you realize how psychic you are. The 12th house is ruled by Neptune and it's the sign it rules Pisces. And this is associated with past lives, the dream state, the unconscious mind or subconscious mental health versus the opposite house, the sixth house is physical health and um, kind of your repressed memories that could come out during the dream state and fantasy, illusion, self undoing like addictions, all of that stuff figures into the 12th house. And you've had Pluto there for, for 10 years. Now for Aquarians being an air sign, Unless you have a lot of Pisces in your chart, it may be unnerving for you to explore your feelings, your past, you know, stuff from your childhood. Um, and, you know, we always talk about the past as childhood. What about past lives? Aquarius likes to keep things analytical keep things on the mental level, not in the emotional realm. And the 12th house being a water house is all about the emotions, but it's not necessarily just your emotions. It's emotions of humanity as a whole. And this is why when I'm doing personal readings and I see people with one or more planets in the 12th house, a lot of times you can see how they are that they don't have boundaries and that a lot of times they can be very, you know, empathic towards others, but it ends up hurting them. them. They end up hurting themselves because they don't give themselves the same regard that they give other people. And also they don't set boundaries. So, uh, Pluto in the 12th house has really helped you to purge 
maybe a lot of karma because Pluto is karmic and the 12th house is karmic. Saturn is karmic too. So, uh, but Pluto is about purging and about regeneration. I wonder how many of you have had more psychic activity since 2008. If you've had any unusual experiences, please, and you wish to share them, that is, please do so below. Saturn in this house is helping to let you see where you trip yourself up. And, um, and yet there can be this sense of pessimism if you allow it, because sometimes with Neptune, it's because it is without boundaries, Saturn is in there trying to rein in those tendencies and there's kind of like this battle between the indistinct and the, you know, the distinct with Saturn. Saturn is all about grounding things into reality. The 12th house is anything but reality. So Saturn has a hard time here. And you are also ruled by Saturn. Saturn is the ancient ruler of Aquarius, but it's still, um, every time I see it's, it's still attributed to Aquarius. Um, I mean, it rules Capricorn, obviously, but, um, it's still attributed to your sign and the Saturnian influence can be rather, um, not, I wouldn't say dark so much as, you know, looking at, the, you know, pessimist, um, pessimistic in the shadow aspect, but in the proper, in the constructive way, it still is restrictive, restrictive. And that can be rather frustrating if you are somebody, for instance, who is creative because the 12th house can give you inspiration that is quite magical but Saturn here can be kind of a Debbie Downer. So what the best thing you could possibly do in the next few years with Saturn in the 12th house, if you haven't done so already, is have a meditation routine because Saturn can certainly help you with that. And I think all Aquarians, just like all signs, benefit from meditation because it allows us to properly channel some of these feelings that we don't know where they're coming from, that we may be kind of, um, you know, as empaths, I'm sure a lot of people watching this, regardless of sign, um, you know, who watch astrology readings are empathic on some level. And meditation helps to kind of keep you focused so that you don't take on, uh, you know, kind of, it's almost like a protection in, in a sense too. So, Hopefully, you can utilize Saturn in the 12th house, and you have Mercury there until the 31st, and that can just, I've had situations myself, I don't know if it's always been with Mercury in the 12th house, but it's like these cellular memories popping up, and it kind of feels weird, you know, it kind of is like freaky, where you see something and it reminds you of a deeply buried thing, and that leads to other things coming in for you, but it's all like a clearing. If you, if you use it that way, it doesn't have to be something really, um, bad. And then uh, on the 31st, you have Aquarius, the, uh, you have Aquarius, you have Mercury going into your sign Aquarius and you are the consummate salesperson of yourself. If you need to, you know, for instance, get a job or promote your business, what have you, you can do so very effectively when Mercury is in your sign because you can communicate who you are. And nobody needs to communicate who they are, probably more than Aquarian, because you are one of a kind. And um, and other people may, you know, form formulate certain opinions about you that aren't necessarily true. And when you open your mouth, you're able to kind of clarify things. On the 16th, we have a new moon in, in that 12th house, house again, 
at 26 degrees of Capricorn. So new beginnings in the spiritual realm and how that um, applies to you, who knows? Maybe you wander into a yoga class that changes your life in terms of meeting a person who becomes an important spiritual teacher for you in the coming year. And uh, with Saturn in the 12th house, I think you could even uh, find a teacher that can really steer you in the right direction. Because don't forget, um, you're going to have Saturn in your sign in a few years, probably, I, I'm assuming around 2020. And so in this time, it's like you're tying up loose ends with Saturn in the 12th house. This may be a time when you meet somebody that really can help prepare you for that Saturn returning into your sun sign or your rising sign. Okay, and then we have Venus the very next day on the 17th going into your sign. So for half of the month, Venus is in your 12th house. This could um, definitely be a time when you are dealing with some kind of a karmic love affair. Maybe it's even a extramarital affair, or maybe you're not cheating on your spouse. Maybe you're with somebody who is cheating on their spouse and you're sneaking around. The 12th house is a very um, clandestine kind of a vibe. And um, with Venus there, there could be a secret love affair. And so that that has its own challenges, obviously. You have Saturn there, so it could be talking about karmic karmic uh, debts and uh, maybe twin flame activity. And how that goes for you, I don't know. But then Venus goes into your first house, and there's a sense of you being the at attractive force that again, just like you have Mercury coming into this sector the last day of the month, you're able to charm people. You're able to even appear to be more attractive than you normally are because the first house is the house of the self, including the body. On the 26th, Sagittarius, <laughs> I keep saying the sign, Mars goes into Sagittarius. And um, so this means that for most of the month, with Mars and Scorpio, we're talking about 10th house activity. So while all this other stuff is going on for you that I consider quite interior work that you may be doing, Aquarius, you have this very vigorous energy that's at the top of your chart in the 10th house of career and your reputation in the world. And so you may be very ambitious in January for most of the month where you're just trying to accomplish a particular thing. And in some cases you have to be careful because you could get into some kind of conflict with people that are higher on the food chain than you are. Um, at work, and um, you may be clashing with your superiors. Mars can bring aggressive energy and conflict, and this could be in your career. But it can be something where you are just chomping at the bit to accomplish something, and for most of the month you are doing so. But I, I've been saying in these uh, January readings that I really feel like things are going to start to, to get more mellow when Mars leaves Scorpio because Scorpio is very intense and Mars in Scorpio is like gasoline, gasoline on the fire, you know. And so that's happening on the 26th, and this is your 11th house of hopes and wishes. Um, it's also friendship, so be careful of getting very mouthy or, you know, aggressive with your friends. Maybe there's going to be a falling out. Um, 
but you know, this is the luckiest house. And if you feel like a clashing with friends, with the groups that you, the group that you belong to, and with Aquarius, this is something that is particularly important for you because you are very social. Just realize that it could be that you are changing. As I say, you know, you've had a a lunar eclipse, an ending, a very powerful ending that that ha had reverberations for months afterwards, going into 2018. And so you may just be uh, shedding an old skin anyhow. And so this is just more of the same. But you may be aggressively pursuing a dream of yours that may have nothing to do with your career, just something that you've always wanted to do. And that could definitely light up your life. On the 31st, as I stated earlier, there's a total lunar eclipse in your opposite sign Leo. And this is in your seventh house of committed partnerships. So be prepared for, in some cases, calling it quits with a spouse. Before you give me a thumbs down for this, if, if you don't want to get divorced, this is only for people who have been struggling in their relationship. Obviously, if your relationship is good, you you don't even have to worry about this. But this is for people who have been hanging on to something that has outworn its its um, expiration date, and it's important to to realize when something is over. And eclipses are times that the universe gives us a nudge in this case, to let something go. And um, it could be this dream that you've had about a relationship that maybe you were deluded about the whole time. And perhaps during this lunar eclipse, you will have a major revelation because um, these are this is a very powerful full moon. So it means that there could be some kind of insight that you have about your partner, about the marriage or relationship itself that you needed to really look at. And now it's staring you in the eyes. So embrace that and embrace the change. And I wish you all the best Aquarius. Take care. If you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below. Um, I have uh, natal chart interpretations, all kinds of readings. All right, you guys. Bye.